The first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in their own language. They were astounded, and in amazement, they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in our native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God, the word of God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in all works. Pleasing to God be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, live by the spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the spirit, you are not under the law. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit, the Word of God. The Lord be with you. Thank you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, who I will send you from Abba God, the Spirit of truth that proceeds from God will testify of me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when the spirit of truth comes, you will be guided to all truth. This spirit will not speak on her own authority, but will only speak what she hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. The spirit will glorify me, taking what is mine and declaring it to you. Everything that Abba God has is mine. 
For this reason, I told you that the Spirit will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is our feast day where we celebrate all the ways that the Spirit has been at work in the world and especially here at Spiritus Christi. We've had quite a year together celebrating a look back at 25 years where she's been blowing on us, leading us, guiding us, sending us, and holding us as a beloved community. It was 25 years ago that Reverend Mary took a courageous step to become our founding pastor and led us through 20 years through developing and living out a theology of inclusion, outreach, and racial justice. Friends, we have watched God bless this community for over 25 years with new outreach ministries like the Mental Health Center, Grace of God Recovery House, the 1872 Cafe, Jennifer House, and Nielsen House, while restoring international ministries like Chiapas and Hope Haiti as we journey together from being Roman Catholics to being an independent Catholic community that welcomes all just as Jesus did. So as I reflected on the gospel today, one line hit me, and that is when Jesus says to the disciples that the spirit which proceeds from God will give them testimony of Jesus and that the disciples also would give testimony because they were with him from the beginning. And many of you have been with us from the beginning. Some of you came in the middle and others have just recently joined us but each of you carry a testimony, a story, a memory that is important to you. And so it was in that spirit that I reached out on social media and through the bulletin to solicit your testimony. I asked parishioners to think about the last 25 years. What memories, what testimonies do you carry that would be important to think about and reflect on in terms of how the spirit has moved through our collective lives? And you told me lots of things. You told me of transition periods from Corpus, visiting Spiritus for the first time, liturgies that were special to you, and weddings, and funerals, and ordinations, and committees that you were on, and so much more. So today, I want to share what you told me as we let our hearts be filled with gratitude and love for this journey that we have been on and are on with the Spirit of Christ. Jonathan Leach told me that what I'm carrying in my heart is the fall of 1997. Gospel Choir, Mother Sherry, John John's Bakery's journey began. Sib Pettix wrote, my most memorable moments were during the transition from Corpus, our community coming together to support our principles under pressure from Rome has become a major point of personal pride to have been involved in such an eventful period of local church history that has had an effect worldwide. Bonnie wrote, in Harry Lang's and my journey with you over 40 years, from Corpus through Christ Spiritus, and the steady loving velocity of grace you continue to nurture. I remember, like Sid Pettix, the turmoil initially. I can't nearly express it as well as he does. I remember my initial anger about the injustice. I remember disbelief that inclusion would be viewed as a threat. I remember worrying sick about you and Father Jim, Mary, Sister Margie, Maureen, and Mike, people who lived then and continue to live for others continually and how you could be marginalized, rejected, or worse. I remember going to the chancery or pastoral office or whatever you call it now to protest, to write, to meet, whatever. It was a hollow place. And then, not sure if it was after Christmas Eve at Salem or alternative services or the evening mass where everybody got thrown out, Harry and I became very peaceful and said, we're on an interesting ride <laughs> and in new territory. And there's no going back to the old ways for us. Thank God that for that and for you. We are so blessed by
by this community and so appreciative of the courage and your beautiful priesthood and an extraordinary community we embrace. Bridget wrote, I carry the Christmas plays with me, watching Marina Castleman go from being a star to managing the stars. Also her baptism, welcoming her to the church, to the church home. Karen Crow said, my daughters being in the beautiful seven last words, and both of them making such strong connections in the youth group, so grateful. Also, lots of happy times, singing with the gospel choir. I have loved it, and I still do. Bishop Christine Mar Lummesberger from Austria wrote, I carry your ordination. Hava, Pastor Hava, said, I carry May 1st, 2010, the ordination of two priests, including me, and three deacons, including Reverend Patty LaRosa. <laughs> the wonderful choir that sang that day, all the joy, my first mass the next day with music from Bill Welch and friends and you and Myra and Jonathan singing bridge over troubled waters. And before that, facilitating parish community forums, the intense ones during the crisis, more ordinary ones during calmer times, that wonderful feeling of coming to solutions together and about a million masses and all the hugs. Meg Morin wrote, feeling my little baby kick in my belly for the first time up in the balcony as you led a song with the gospel choir up on stage listening to this little light of mine at his baptism a few months later, meeting the incredible Starpoli and Boucher family. <laughs> Tracy Ball wrote, I carry my boys, Connor and Joshua, were baptized and made their first communion there. And first communion day and the prep for it included some really great stuff, very special gospel choir, all the amazing music, musicians, and soloists. We loved so many of the homilies, but my husband and I would also listen for a song lyric in Mike B's. Then the secret smile we'd share when we heard it. Entire community holding hands for the Our Father and hearing my dad sniffle as we all sang his favorite part. Vicki, Susan, Susan McStravick, Lori, Vernell, Ortiz, Caleb, and Jared said, I carry the singing in the gospel choir. Jared went on to say, sitting down in the balcony in 2011, thinking this is exactly where I belong, caring connection and all the incredible friendships that are like family. Sally Partner wrote all the wonderful times working with Mimi Visconti Youngman on religious ed and sacramental prep watching our son Zach blossom in those programs. And given that music is an essential part of our spirituality, all the wonderful music that we are blessed with within our community. Catherine Kipp wrote, my very first mass, everything my kids did there, baptism, communions, penance, always such beautiful, meaningful services. Reverend Myra's ordination, seven last words, every time, but especially my first, Interpreting for Mary when she announced her retirement and my hands started to shake and I was tearing up, trying to continue to interpret and interpreting for Mike Boucher, which she says is always fun. <laughs> Sandra Korn said, I, go, I could go on forever, but Mary Lou Lant bringing me to choir, meeting my now husband, Michael Korn, for the first time. Father Jim was on our first date at the 1872 Cafe, chairing your ordination committee, meeting Sister Marging, serving on the Grace of God Recovery House Board, so many friends who are like family, having Father Jim walk me down the aisle, and you and Reverend Mary officiate our wedding with our gospel choir family singing and present the best day of our lives. <laughs> And then we have a message from Europe. Alicia Baranowska wrote, if I may, from far away in Europe, the time of pandemic and the opportunity you have given me to take part in your beautiful liturgies through the internet 
when we were all stuck at home. Although I know in person only two or three persons related to the parish, and at the time I knew only one. Thank you, Mary Lou Aguilar, she writes, for introducing me to Spiritus. I could feel being part of a larger Spiritus Christi family. Although I don't join you often, usually while traveling, I'm following the Mass on YouTube. It is good to know that you are there, welcoming as always, and I speak of you when I have a chance as a wonderful, truly Christian, independent Catholic community, a community I would like to see elsewhere. Many blessings on your anniversary. Don Novak, Novak wrote, singing at Mary's ordination at Eastman, presenting Reverend Meyer for ordination from the family ministry are just a couple of wow events. And then of course, my Chiapas community, marrying my husband and baptizing my girls, along with being part of the senior high youth group, religious ed and choirs. The most humbling was being asked to do the Mother's Day homily. I have been more than blessed. Ben Canalba wrote, coming in for the first time, there were people just like me. I took a deep breath. I exhaled a sigh of relief. I found a faith-based community that fully accepted those just like me. The message was clear. God is love, and love is for everyone. Finally, Mary Ellen Green wrote, I joined Corpus Christi 30 years ago. As I entered the church for the first time, it felt like a huge hug. The same hug has followed me straight to Spiritus Christi. And I'm sure many of you are carrying more memories, more stories that have brought you to this moment in our 25th history. And they are amazing. But of course, no celebration is complete without Father Jim. We're missing our champion, whose forerunner work at Corpus made this all possible. We are so grateful for his vision, and because of that vision and that work, we, our community was started by a woman priest, Reverend Mary Rammerman. And because of that work, we hired our first African-American priest successor, me. <laughs> and we hired our first young adult priest, Reverend Outstanding Seeley. And we were able to extend our family to our Across the Miles family who are here today. Why don't you stand up? It's been such a pleasure, such an honor to have you be part of our extended family. We love you so much from all around the world and all around the country. Thank you so much for being with us. Friends, over the years, we've taken important stands together. We've dreamed together. We've created justice together and a beautiful parish modeling a community of love and care in so many ways. As we started our first outreach program together and ordained women leaned into our racial and social justice work through taking convoy trips, standing up for farm workers, embracing asylum seekers, becoming actively involved in protest justice work. We partnered to create an outdoor civil rights park and so much more. And we partnered to ordain these two beautiful women who have joined us, Reverend Patty and Reverend Hava, who are amazing pastors in our community. A few additional highlights is that we started the Mother Earth community and the Caring Connection together. And we led on marriage equality while the state had to catch up. We put forth work centering children through our Buddy Readers program, religious ed, young, young youth group, and the work with the Children's Defense Fund. We centered our deaf community and second language community by providing deaf and Spanish interpretation every Sunday at 9.30 Mass. Together, we've provided amazing music, homilies, hospitality, and leadership, and so much more that it doesn't even touch the surface. So as the Spirit has blown her love on us, we have taken that love to the world and we've shared it with each other. 
for 25 amazing years. We made a promise 25 years ago to courageously follow Jesus' radical message of unconditional love. And Spiritus Christi, you nailed it. So may God continue to breathe on you, Spiritus. We have had many challenges, and we've met them all with faith and with trust and with love. Together, we've created a home for the stranger, for the marginalized, for the poor, for Jesus, and for each other. So may God bless you with many more as we celebrate the work of the Spirit among us. Happy Pentecost, Spiritus Christi. Because I am free, because I am free. 